we're at the Site C Summit in, in Victoria, British Columbia. It's January the 27th, 2018. Uh, I'm talking to Connie Gray Eyes. Hi, thank you for, uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak about uh, the Site C Dam and the impact that it has on my life. Uh, being a Treaty 8 uh, First Nations member and uh, also a resident um, that lives very, very close to the dam site. Um, one of the main reasons when I was asked to come to the Site C Summit and speak, um, I, I really felt it was important for, for the voices of the Indigenous women and girls of the community to be heard here. That a lot of times when, when we talk about Site C, we talk about the economics of it, of uh, how it doesn't make sense, and the flooding of the land, and the loss of caribou and wildlife habitat. Um, the farmland, what I feel is really missed is, is the loss of life and the loss of, um, of the safety of the women and girls in my community. When a large scale project like this comes to town where you have this influx of workers that flood the town and, um, and I feel like the, the humanness of it gets lost, you know. Um, I know uh, being, being a grassroots activist and, and being part of the Women's Resource Society uh, and, and seeing the, the effects of, of industry, migrant workers, and what they have on the women and girls of the community um, should be heard and should be addressed. Uh, a da on a daily basis, women come in that have been assaulted or abused in, in various ways. and um, And... I think that industry and hydro have a responsibility to meaningfully protect the women and girls from our com in our community. And um, you know, these things are not, uh, they're not solved with money. You know, it's about, it's about education, uh, about the community, the lands that you are working on, and uh, making sure that uh, the people, especially the indigenous people, women and girls, are respected on the land in which you are on. Um, I heard a comment this morning that um, that the First Nations people own the land. I don't know very many First Nations people that speak of owning the land. We are not owners of the land. We know that we are on the land and that um, it gives us the tools that we need to survive, both spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally. And to hear that, you know, um, as an ally, you know, we need to support and stand up with the people that own the land, um, I, I really feel like it needs to be addressed that First Nations people don't believe we own the land. We have a responsibility of the, to the land to protect it. And, uh, and I prefer to say that, you know, the Indigenous people are keepers of the land. And that is why this fight is so important, because you can you can correlate the the destruction of Mother Earth to the destruction of the spirits and the hearts of the women and girls of the communities in which these large scale projects happen, and everybody else around the world as well. Yes, we're all getting killed. It's so interesting that you, that you mentioned that because um, a couple of years ago I had the pleasure of meeting a, a, a gentleman named uh, Angel Colon and he was, um, he was imprisoned in Mexico for seven years, tortured, and he was released and me and him were both a keynote speaker and his experiences that he had in, in his land were very much the same here. It's not only in Canada where the indigenous people and people of the, of the territories are trying to protect the land. It's everywhere where you see large scale industry come in and trample on the rights of the indigenous people of that territory and rape and pillage the land and leave nothing for the people that depend on it. And they trample the rights of everybody. I think to the corporation, everybody is indigenous people. Mm -hmm. They don't care about us. Yeah. They have their agenda, which is which is profit and power and these huge projects which benefit them. And anybody who gets in their way uh, is uh, trampled on and shoved aside, killed when necessary, and uh, they carry on. Yeah. 
do you want to make any... Were, were you surprised by Mr. Horgan's decision? To, no. Neither was I. I absolutely had every hope that he was going to do the right thing as a human being. And um, unfortunately, he, he did what most politicians do. They do what they minimal necessary to um, to appease the public and then they turn on them. I, uh, I remember vividly that morning um, the announcement and I, I literally could not get out of, out of my chair. So you were surprised? I was sadly surprised. Um, I knew it was coming. Uh, just the things that were leading up to it, you know, um, some of the reports that were coming out that uh, somebody had leaked to the media that the decision was going to forge ahead. Um, interestingly enough, when the two Green Party leaders were here, I, I was sitting in the back and I thought to myself, they're here. For myself, my integrity would not have allowed me to be pressured into agreeing to go ahead. We count on those people that we elect on, on a premise that they were going to stand behind their integrity and what the integrity and what they say, that they're going to protect us and that they're going to do what's right. And while I appreciate their presence here, I, f I really felt betrayed. By the two, two of the Green Party MLAs that are here yeah. today. I, I had a conversation with Craig and, uh, and he said, but you know, I think that, that it's because, you know, if they did that, then the Liberals would still be in power. And I said, but you know what? I would still have my integrity. I would still have that and I would not waver from it for anything. That, you know what, if it's gonna be the same old, same old, you know what, at least I still have my integrity. And how while- about, How about all the NDP MLAs? Exactly. I, I vote independent myself. I, uh, I feel like that, um, that <coughs> that's, that's the safest route for me to go because I don't, I don't fully support any parties. Um, that's that's just me. Um, I live in a riding for sure that is liberal, and there you could have um, you could have thrown a monkey with a paper bag on his head, and they would win in my riding. You know, um, I had such high hopes, and they they dissipated the minute that he stepped on that on that platform and started speaking because I had already known um, because of the of the information that had been leaked. So here we are, it's a few weeks now after the decision was made. Um, we're at the Site C Summit. Do you have any idea of if there is a movement building to deal with this? I mean, it's not, not only a betrayal, but a, a complete malfunction, maybe you can call it, of our political system and system of government because over and over they're not giving us what we want. Is there any movement that you see anywhere happening on, on the broader issue of fixing up the basic problems with our democratic system and government? You know, uh, when, when the last federal election happened, uh, there was a, a large group of Indigenous people that we had decided, you know what, we're going to rock this vote. Uh, we, we created First Nations Rock the Vote, where we had um, nations that ran out of ballots because so many people had gone to the polls. And, um, and you know, that, that has been a discussion that um, we, we organized that. We still have that page going, and uh, I think it's time to shake, to shake things up and to start that again and and hold hold our elected officials 
accountable. You know, there's so much of, well, they're going to do what they're going to do and there's nothing we can do about it. There is something we can do about it. You know, we can call them out and we can go to the polls and we can change that. And I find that, um, that whenever you have that party, you know, whether it be Liberal or NDP or Greens, that they eventually toe that line and get in line because that's how the game what, works. You've got to be part of the game. You've got to, you've got to toe that line. And, um, and I'd really, I, I'm really interested to speak to one of the gentlemen that was talking this morning because I'd like him to come on to that page, First Nations Rock the Vote. And, and really start to inform because what we had what we had planned to do when we organized that was to talk to people that might not understand the political system and how it works. You know, many people believe that you go into into the ballots and, and the polling stations and you vote for Trudeau or you vote. They didn't understand that you actually vote for your local riding and that's how it's decided. So just those basic that basic knowledge was the basis for it. And then I think now we can start addressing uh, what's wrong with, with this system and really start to promote um, individuals who, who are independents. And I mean, I can't tell you how disappointing it is that we had three members of a Green Party that had the ability to, to really push their weight around and they didn't, you know, um, where, 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 like, where does that sit for us as, as people that you put that faith in, in this system that, you know, for me, I haven't had faith in the system for a long time. It has let me down over and over again, and it continues to do so. So there's got to be some form of change happening. And, and it, it is going to start with grassroots. You know, it's, it's got to start somewhere and every big movement that has happened in the world has come from, from one person's idea that things can change, you just have to believe in it. Connie Grayas, thank you very much. Is, would you like to finish off with anything else? You know, um, I, I, I don't want to come across as being negative regarding, regarding the, this system it's impossible not to. You know, you come to Fort St. John and you see the Peace Valley and what has been done to it. I stood on those banks with my son while he prayed and he danced for that river and for the people. And um, there's a very special elder that passed away. Uh, his name was Tommy Atachi and, and I spoke to him a lot about the Site Sea Dam. He was somebody I went to for guidance. Uh, he was a dreamer. He's a Deneza uh, from the Doig River First Nation. And he told me, you know, he goes, we may not beat them in the courts. And he said, but they'll never beat the peace. They will never win against the peace because she's the boss. And I believe that. My own feeling is, even if the the thing gets built, it should never be filled with water. So it's just a waste of money. That's bad enough, but mm -hmm. to flood it is is a hundred times worse. Yeah. I, I really hope that all of the, you know, um, I think it might have been Roland or, or Art that said last night that, you know, um, that tr the Treaty 8, I think that even we've we've fallen into this idea that, you know, um, uh, that the site Sea Dam is being built in the in the Beaver Denisa territory, that uh, it's the Treaty Eight territory of, of northeastern BC. That you know, I I I'm from Wabasca, Alberta, my family, and we're Treaty Eight. And what happens in 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 where I live affects that. And I really hope that that we can get across to the other nations of Treaty Eight that. This is all of our territory and what happens on it is all of our responsibility. You know, it's been left to West Moberly and, and Prophet to continue this fight, but my hope is that all nations of the Treaty 8 territory start standing behind them. And you know, like, like they said last night, that it was, it was decisions when, when those agreements were made with the nations that have signed on, that's under duress. You know, you, you better take it now because 
you're not going to get it in the future. This is your chance to sign on and do something for your people. And like Roland said, he has a, he has a huge responsibility for his community. You know, the amount of pressure that he must feel continuing this fight, and it feels so endless. But the, the strength that he has is incredible. You know, and, and I really hope that more, more nations get behind him and, and stand with them in solidarity because what happens in Treaty 8 territory affects all Treaty 8 members. And it also affects everybody who lives in BC. Yes. Yes, it's, yes. it's a huge issue. And it's only beginning. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.